Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Monica Scholar. So it was about four and a half years ago when I was hanging out with my friend for her 40th birthday. And I'm standing at the bar listening to Michael Jackson play overhead, and I'm trying not to break into the full choreography for Thriller, which <laughs> I've been known to do. But I'm so glad I didn't, because this very handsome man came and stood next to me, and he struck up a conversation. So we're talking, and sparks are flying, things are going so well. So we make our plans that night for our very first date, which was for the following Friday. So Friday comes, he picks me up, and we just have a blast from beginning to end. We're just having a great time talking. Our day didn't end until six o'clock that morning. We just hung out all night talking, hand to God. By the end of the night, we were talking about when, not if, we would get married, and how we would have our honeymoon in the Bahamas. It was just great. He was perfect. Until I learned he was a single father to a five-year-old son. So at this point, I'm kind of feeling like, you know how you're in the store and you see your favorite snack and you're like, ooh, when I get home, I'm gonna tear this snack up, it's gonna be so good. And you get home and turn the bag over and realize you got the fat-free baked version of the snack. And it's kind of like, oh, this is not what I thought I was getting. So, and don't get me wrong, it's not like I don't like kids, it's just that they are of the devil. They have these nasty little fingers that they wipe their noses with and touch your expensive stuff. They cry, they need stuff. And this was just not conducive to my lifestyle as queen of all bachelorettes. I mean, that's who I was at that time. I'm a writer, so I'm used to being up all times of the night writing. I wake up at one o'clock in the afternoon and have cupcakes and wine for breakfast because I can, because nobody's dependent on me to make Cocoa Puffs while I'm at six o'clock in the morning. So I'm like, how are these two lifestyles about to mesh? And I couldn't exactly say that to him, because how do you say, um, I think your kid's a demon, and um, I'm apparently a terrible person because I have no maternal instinct, but I think you're really cute and funny, so I hope this doesn't affect us. You know, I couldn't exactly say that. So I'm like, this guy's so cute and so nice, I don't want to end things because of this kid. So I'm like, let me just be chill. We'll see how it goes. You know, I won't freak out right now. So we continue to date, things are going well, and the next thing I know, I'm meeting this five-year-old. And I have to admit, he is freaking adorable. He's got dimples for days, big brown eyes, he comes up to my waist, little pipe cleaner arms, he's adorable. <laughs> But I still had my cross in my back pocket in case his head started spinning around and started spewing green filth from his mouth. I'm like, yo, cute, don't fool me. I already know what kids are all about. But it was going well. So I'm like, you know, this is great. Things are going well. I look up and it's about a year into our relationship and I'm in love. I'm in love with this man. He's a wonderful father. He works so hard. He's a great dad to this kid. This kid is so precocious and fun. They both have me laughing. I'm just so happy to be in the mix. He kept him and his snotty fingers away from all my expensive stuff. So I'm like, this is working well. You know, we're doing well. Until one day, he's like, hey, I've got this um, one day work trip that I'm going on. So I was wondering what you thought about keeping my son for me. So what I really was thinking was you have the worst judgment in the world to leave a person in my care. It's a miracle that I take care of myself every day. Um, but what I said was, absolutely, you can leave him. I'll take him out for walks. I'll put a food and water dish out for him, which is what you would do for a dog. For some reason, this man still left his child in my care. So I'm like, oh gosh, I cannot let this get the best of me. I'm like, let me just, I'm gonna do this. It's gonna be fun. We're gonna have a good time. The next thing I know, it's me and little man alone. So I'm like, you know what? Whatever you want to do, let's do it. Let's have a great time. What do you want to do first? So he's like, let's play video games. So I'm like, all right, video games it is. So he settles himself on the sofa. He's got the controller ready. So he's like, all right, we're going to play Super Mario Brothers. I'm going to be Mario. You're going to be Yoshi. And I'm going to ride on your back. And we're going to go save the princess. So I'm like, cool, Mario, Yoshi, go save the princess. So for the next 20 or 30 minutes, he proceeds to nearly cuss me out because I don't know what I'm doing. So Yoshi is walking around in circles. I fall off a cliff. I get hit with fireballs. A dinosaur jumps on my head. 
I, we die. Every few feet, we die a horrible, miserable death. I not only kill Mario and Yoshi, I kill Luigi, Princess Peach, Princess Leia, like everybody dies at my hands. It's just a slaughter. So he is devastated. He just puts his remote down and just goes to the room. So I'm feeling awful like a terrible person. I'm ruining this kid's life. We're off to a horrible start. But eventually, he comes from his room and he's like, I'm hungry. So let me tell you a little something about my cooking skill set as queen of all bachelorettes. I have three go-to recipes in my back pocket. And if you want to eat something outside of those three, then I guess you want to order takeout because this is what I have to offer. So this is what you have. So I say to this five-year-old, these are your options. We can do jumbo pasta shells. I'll stuff them with Italian sausage and sun-dried tomatoes, some pasta sauce, mozzarella, Parmesan cheese. I'll bake it in the oven with some Texas toast and asparagus. That sounds good, right? Second option was pancakes and bacon. Not flabby bacon, crispy bacon only. That's what I do. The next option was baked pork chops and brown rice. So I say to him, which of these do you want? So he didn't even have to open his mouth because the look on his face is like, these are the dumbest options I've ever heard in my life. Asparagus doesn't even sound like a real thing. Like, I can't even believe you just said this to me. But what he said instead was, I want a hot dog. So a hot dog wasn't too far outside of my skill set. So I'm like, fine, I'll make you a hot dog. So I hook it up. I toast the bread, ketchup, mustard, I give them some chips and like some random vegetable because from what I hear, you're supposed to give vegetables to kids. <laughs> so I put the plate in front of him and I'm so happy because he cleans his plate. He eats everything. So I'm like, finally, I'm doing something right. So I may have been fishing for a compliment because I'm like, hey, how was your food? And he's like, oh, it was okay, but it wasn't as good as daddy's. So, I mean, I know I'm no Wolfgang Puck, but it was a hot dog. He could have been like, oh, it's wonderful, I love you, you're great. But no, kids really don't care about your feelings, so he just told me the truth. So I had to accept it, and I did. So then a little bit of time goes on, and he's like, I'm bored. So I'm like, what do you want to do? He's like, well, can you tell me a story? Of course I can tell you a story. I tell stories for a living, like this is what I do. So I'm like, you prepare yourself to be entertained. So I'm ready to put on a Broadway production. I'm in full hair, makeup, costume. I am ready for my Oscar, my Tony, everything. So I spin a clever tale about this little boy, the same name and the age as him, who finds this rock in his room. It's a black rock with these glowing green symbols and he doesn't know what they mean. And it turns out that this rock is a communication device for aliens on another planet. And they gave him the rock because he is the key to saving their planet from the evil forces who want to destroy them. So I'm mid-sentence, acting it all out, and seeing, I'm doing it all, I'm giving face, I'm giving voice. And he stops me and says, oh, I don't want to hear this story. I want to hear an interesting one instead. <laughs> this don't even sound real. So... You know those are fighting words, right? You're telling that to a storyteller. So I'm like, that doesn't sound real to you, but what does sound real is once a year, some big bunny hopping into your house, bringing you a basket full of little plastic eggs and jelly beans and little miniature chocolate versions of him because apparently the Easter Bunny is very vain. That sounds real to you. And what does sound real to you is some big fat man at the end of every year with a red suit on gives magical powers to animals and they fly urgently to you to bring a sack full of toys that your parents get no credit for and he shimmies his big fat butt down the chimney to come and deliver the toys to you and eat some little raggedy cookie that you bake with your little nasty fingers. And why, like why did you even give him cookies? He's already fat. You should have gave him like carrots or like celery or something. I didn't say any of that to him, but in my head, I went in on him in my head. So I ended up telling him a story of Three Little Pigs, but let me tell you, it had an alternate ending, extra characters, like he got a story that night. So a little bit of time passes, we like watch a movie, we hang out for a little bit, and finally it's bedtime. So I am praising the Lord that this boy is still alive, the house is not on fire, he, nothing went wrong, I didn't have to do CPR, the Heimlich, nothing, like we're winning. 
So I get him in the bathroom, he's brushing his teeth, he's putting his clothes and pajamas on. And um, he's like, can you leave? I need to use the bathroom. And I'm like, have at it, my friend. My plan was to go speak a swig of wine. Not to inebriate myself, just to take the edge off. So I go off and he's in the bathroom and he's in there for about 10 minutes. So the next thing I know, he screams my name. So I go run into the door. I'm like, what's wrong? I was pooping and it got stuck in my butt. Can you help me get it out? You remember I told you kids were of the devil? Because what godly being would ask this of another person? I can't even believe he just said this to me and he was serious. So my first instinct as queen of the bachelorettes was to be like, oh, so your dad will be home in about six hours, so shake your legs so they don't fall asleep. Um, I'll slide a few hot dogs under the door, but otherwise, homie, Godspeed, because I ain't about that life. But I cannot say this to him because now I love him. I love him and I love his father, and they're both depending on me, so I have to help out. So I go in the bathroom, I'm trying to be confident. I'm like, hey, you on that toilet, look at you. Um, so I totally help people with this same thing every day. So you are in such good hands and you have no reason to be nervous. So I'm going on and on. And he's like, kill the soliloquy and just help a brother out because it's burning my butt. So I do, I help him. Afterwards, he's happy because he's clean. I'm scarred. I should probably be in therapy for it now, but I manage. So I'm on my way out the door and he stops me and he says, Monica, you're a really good mom. Thank you. I felt like I was winning at life. So let me get this straight. Even though I murdered the entire cast and crew of Super Mario Brothers, even though I don't cook as well as your dad, even though I tell awesome stories, let's get that straight, but you don't see the value in them. I'm still a good mom. I was winning at life. I win, you lose. I was so happy. And I have to tell you, I've been happy ever since because me and his father have been married for almost two years now. And we did take that honeymoon in the Bahamas. And my five-year-old will be 10 next month on June 5th. And we are all bound together in love now. And the best part is I no longer think that kids are of the devil. Well, at least not my kids. Monica Scholar.